Wait, the hell? I was supposed to unlock my throat. This key was supposed to unlock my throat. Why isn't it working? Ah, stupid key. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Insidious The Last Key. The first movie of 2018, we are starting off 2018 with an Insidious movie. Hopefully it is not bad, at least. And the film stars Lynn Shea, it is written by Lee Winnell and it is directed by Adam Robital. Hopefully that's how you pronounce his name. So Insidious The Last Key tells the story of Elise, who goes back to her childhood home, a home she hoped to never go back to because she had a very, very rough childhood. But when someone that lives in her past home actually calls her up because there's some kind of demon haunting this house, she, along with these paranormal investigators, have to go there to go ahead and see what's going on at that childhood home of hers. So Insidious The Last Key is a film I just went to with whatever expectations to be honest. Like I wasn't necessarily dreading this film, but <clears throat> I wasn't exactly like, oh man, I need to go see this film right away. It's just a film I thought looked, you know, whatever. Um, as far as what I think of the Insidious films, I actually really like the first two Insidious films. I think the first two Insidious films are very solid horror films. Not to mention that they're both very well directed by James Wan. Insidious Chapter 3 was okay. Like, it's entertaining, it's decent, but it's not something I would really watch ever again. At best, it was just an average film, and I did think it was the weakest of the original trilogy. So with Insidious The Last Key happening, and this being yet another prequel to th these movies, I was hoping maybe I'll get something out of this film. And Insidious The Last Key is pretty much how I felt about Insidious Chapter 3, to be honest. But I will say this, as far as January movies go, Insidious The Last Key is one of the better January horror movies. Like, considering this is what starts the new year for movies, it's not that bad of a start, really. There are things I did really appreciate about The Last Key. First of all, I did like how the movie started, the setup of and see, the last key was definitely very interesting, and it actually got me pretty invested immediately. You know, this film dives more into Elise's past, and it was actually very cool to learn about her past. And I know many others have said it, but the fact that this is led by a 70-something woman, a 70-year-old something woman, is actually very impressive. Um, and Lynn Shay, let me just say, as Elise, she's really good in this film. She is the standout when it comes to her performance. She is really, really strong here. She's really giving it her all. You know, there's four of these movies, and it doesn't look like she's tired of doing this franchise. She continues to show that she does love being a part of this franchise. And I can respect that, honestly. She's always been really great as Elise from the first film to the second film to the third film. And that's no different with Insidious Last Key. Definitely the most believable performance in this film, as well as just the most believable character. I really did like following Elise's backstory and just following Elise's journey. And this is already spoiled in the trailer, but I just want to give a shout out to that cool visual with the key finger and you could actually unlock and you could actually lock someone's throat and just make them completely silent. I thought that was a very cool thing. It was very creative. I haven't really seen a horror film do something like that. Um, so on their part, that was actually very cool. And there were some cool things sprinkled in the last key. And there were some very nice shots. The cinematography was good looking at times. There's a couple of suspenseful moments. There's not enough of that, unfortunately. But when there were those very, very few moments, 
I actually did think it was very cool. I do think the direction by Adam Robital, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. If I didn't pronounce that right, I do apologize. But as far as his direction goes, it's not that bad. I do think that this is a pretty well-directed film for the most part, really, to his credit. The editing isn't that bad either. And I will say, um, the ending of Insidious the Last Key, because this is a prequel to the first Insidious after all. Like, this takes place before Insidious. They do tell you from the beginning this film takes place in 2010 after all. Um, how the ending ties everything together was actually very cool. I was very impressed with how um, this installment ended and how it tied to the original Insidious. But the unfortunate things about Insidious the Last Key, however, my opinion is that visually it's not as impressive as the first two movies. Hell, I'll even say the third film. I, I think the third film, as okay as it was, that was more visually appealing than this one. It's not like it's that bad on the visual standpoint, but it just was not that impressive. When it comes to cinematography, there's times where the movie is just too dark, like particularly when they are inside this house and Elise and the paranormal investigators are hunting for this demon that's in this house. There were actually a lot of moments where, in terms of cinematography, you know, it just didn't look that impressive. It could have looked a little better, at least enough for me to be able to see. Not to mention that the lighting, even when they're outside, is kind of out of place. It just really pales in comparison to the cinematography with the first three movies. The score here was all right. It wasn't really anything all that memorable, to be honest. I was very disappointed with the lack of suspense in this film. Like, this is the least suspenseful Insidious movie, without a doubt. There's not that much of an intensity to this film. When it does get suspenseful, granted, it is very well done. But when it doesn't really have suspense going for it, it honestly just makes the film rather dull. And while the pacing, when the film started out, it did have a nice pace to it, as the film keeps going, I honestly feel tired. I think the film starts to lose its steam. And by the time the film does get to its climax, it gets full on ridiculous. The story itself just feels rushed. And although you get a lot of development with Elise, the story as a whole feels like it didn't get enough development. Like it didn't get enough development where I'm supposed to be sitting there and going, wow, this is actually really, really memorable. And then also Spex and Tucker, obviously they are the paranormal investigators for Elise. They have obviously been this franchise since the first movie, like with Elise. And you know, Lee Winnell and Angus Sampson, they're not bad with their performances. Um, the problem is their characters. Oh my goodness, the humor in this film falls flat. And, and I don't mean like a little flat, it falls really, really flat. There's this gag because Elise meets a couple of these young women. And uh, let's just say there's a little gag with Specs and Tucker hitting on these young women. And it's really creepy to be honest, especially with Tucker. Tucker between the two of them is the creepiest and I'm just saying are going is this necessary and also something that disappointed me about this film is how they didn't really explore that much into the further when I watched the trailer for this film I uh they made it seem like they were gonna dive deeper into the further like oh my god this looks very interesting i like where we're gonna go i uh that's the one thing i will probably say even though i went to this movie with whatever expectations i was actually curious to see how they were gonna dive deep into the further and while yes you get a little bit of your exploration they don't dive as deep into it as they could have and while for the most part the direction was very well done, it is very well directed, there were times where I will say the direction did feel flat. There could have been more to some moments at least 
when it comes to his direction. And certain stuff in this film honestly did feel like it was missing by the time the movie ended. The jump scares in the film were also very predictable. They weren't really anything all that effective. And I will say, I'll give this film credit, it wasn't jump scare galore every single second or even every minute. I'll definitely give it that. Um, I will say it calmed down on the jump scares compared to Insidious Chapter 3, but I do feel like when there is a jump scare, it really isn't all that effective. And when it comes to the side characters in this film, they were fine, but they didn't really do anything for me. I didn't really care for them all that much. And the performances for those side characters, too, were just like, whatever. The actors did what they needed to do for the side characters, but... Yeah, the performances definitely weren't the strongest. Overall, Insidious The Last Key is average. Between this and Insidious Chapter 3, I'm probably going to say that this is slightly weaker than Insidious Chapter 3. In reality, they're both on the same level, but if I had to choose between those two, I think this is now the weakest. This is one of those movies where it could have been worse, but it could have been better too. I was enjoying my time, but as I leave the theater, I'm just going, well, that was a movie, I watched it, um, and that's about it. It's just there. That's the best way to describe and see us. The last key, it's just a movie, that's there. It doesn't bother me that it exists, you know, it happened, whatever. I'm gonna give Insidious The Last Key two and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Insidious The Last Key? And also let me know what is your favorite installment in this franchise? This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!